words and do unto me, O God, from thy throne room. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' holy name. For I ask, I believe, and I claim. Amen. 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 Yes. So this morning, as we look at this text, I want to look at the last part. For he that touched you, touched the apple of his eye. And I want to, I want to phrase this text to root. I want to look at root. So we just want to go to root now to just, we know the story of root who left Moab with her mother-in-law and came down, right? And she's telling the mother-in-law, the mother-in-law is telling her, you know, go back because you don't have to come with me, she and the other daughter-in-law. But here Ruth is saying to the mother-in-law, no, where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. And what you do, I will do, right? Your God will be my God, and your people will be my people. Now, Ruth is not a descendant from the, from the tribe of Israel. She's a Moabite, which come through the tribe of Lot, right? But what is interesting here now, because of what Naomi had shown her, Ruth has come to love this woman so much. So she have made Naomi the happy of her eye because she didn't know God. Ruth did not know God. She didn't know who was this God. She may have heard stories, but she did not have a relationship or a connection with him. They now leave and they come back to Bethlehem, Judah. Because why? She had lost everything in Moab. Naomi had lost everything. But here you have Ruth deciding, I am going to go with you. I am not going to stay here. It's better I come with you than I stay where I am. And it's interesting that when she went to glean in Boaz's vineyard, this conversation between she and Boaz, I've lightened it to a conversation that we should have with God. Because it's indeed important to understand that whoever touched us, touched the apple of God's eye. And it says, now we're looking at Ruth chapter 2, right? And we're looking at verse 12 and 13. And here, this conversation, Boaz is saying to Ruth, the Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Ruth replied, then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Here it is, God is saying to us, we have been recompensed for thy work that we do. But we understand that because of sin, we were separated from God. Being sinful, right? Separated from God, God sent Jesus that we will be reconciled unto him, that we can obtain that gift. So it's a privilege indeed to hear God say to us that we have become the apple of his eye because we have chosen to serve him and we have chosen to stay with him. We have chosen to allow him to be the one that directs us and to carry us where we need to go. And young women and even senior women on this platform, you know, sometimes when things happen in our life, it is so easy to say, where is God? He's not here. He's not helping. He's not doing this. And then we go to human aid. But I want to say something to all of us, myself, including this morning. We have a God who promised to keep us as the apple of his eye. And he does not lie. He speaks the truth. He's not a God who is slack concerning his promises as men who are slack. He is a God that when he says something, it will come to pass and he will uphold what he says. Because he created us, he did not call us into existence, you know. He could have done just like when he called the earth into existence and he called the sea into existence and everything after its kind. But this God who has us as the apple of his eye, this God stooped down and started to shape and fashion and mold us, moving his hand up and down to the very places where he wants to put us together. 
So as he mourned and he shaved, he touched and he cared and he loved that went into creating us uh, in his image after his likeness. He indeed has kept us and continues to keep us. So I want you to know that you're not only fearfully and wonderfully made this morning. We are not only that, but what we are. We are gem in the eyes of God. We are so precious that Jesus went on that cross, giving his blood, leaving divinity, putting it off, that he can take humanity for us. What a privilege indeed to be deemed as a precious apple. And this apple, with all our faults and flaws and all the rotten spots that we have within us, God is going to chip it away. He's going to take it out. And as we come back to the story of Ruth, we look at Ruth allowing God to do that to her. Not born into the tribe of Israel, but knowing by the example that Naomi showed her that this God she can trust. This God and whatever Naomi says to her, she's going to do. So it's a fitting conversation to let hear her say, let me find favor in thy sight. So this morning we ask God to let us find favor in thy sight because he have chosen us. He have ordained us before we were conceived in our mother's womb. His word said it in first Jeremiah. Chap Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, his word said it before we were conceived in our mother's womb, he knew us. Indeed, we can see how we were chosen. And indeed we can see how God has us, not just gems, but apples of his eye. And then she says, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me. God indeed comforts us. When we hurt him, when we in pain, when we in sorrow, we can go to him because his eyes is ever upon us. His ears is ever open to us. His hands are always stretched out towards us that we can go to him and find that comfort in him. We can find that peace in him. We can find that joy in him. We can understand and we know because too many times when we go through situations, sisters on this chat this morning, and if there's any brothers, too many times we leave God and we walk away thinking that this person could help me, the psychiatrist, the physician, the doctor, the nurse, the brother, the sister, and we forget God. Your first place of refuge is Jesus. Always make him your first place of refuge. Because he sits there waiting for us to come to him. And too many times we don't. The conversation is so fitting indeed. For thou hast comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. God will indeed continue to speak friendly unto us. He will indeed continue to take care of us. Jesus' death must not be in vain because we are given free will and think we can do whatever. Understand this morning, each and everyone on this platform, that God have a love for us that we can never, no matter what we do, we can never take that love. We can never break that love. Because the love is there everlasting. Whether we sin or we don't sin, whether whatever we do, the love is there. The love is there. It's not going anywhere. So you have, we have to understand that God indeed loved us before we were even born. He knew. You know, it's an interesting story. I like to read the story of when Jesus said, he have chosen 12, but one is a devil. Jesus knew. Judas, but he did not cast Judas away because after time, you know, Jesus mingling with us, our hearts are supposed to be changed. Our minds are supposed to be renewed. Our understanding is supposed to be when we come into this, into this space where God is, we will begin to understand and we will begin to know this God in such an intimate way that there will be a longing that each day 
Your life would not be complete if God, if you do not speak to God, if you do not find that time with him, if you do not fellowship with him. Remember this morning, as we leave this platform, after we have done all our prayer session, and as Ruth said, for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Each and every one of us is special in the eyes of God. We are originals. There is not one that is the same. We are all originals. So as I come to bring this short, discourse, this short devotion to a close, let us continue to know that we are the apple of God's eye. We have been ordained. We have been chosen. We have been anointed by the Holy Spirit, by God himself, by Jesus, because he has called us into a relationship with him. His name is Jehovah, and he's a relational God. And each day he seeks for that relation with us. And I close with this little words that we, I need us to remember. God has a special purpose for our life. And it says, he has something for you to accomplish that no one else but you can. He alone understands all the twists and turns your life has taken thus far. They don't make sense to you and me now. But one day they will. Not one thing you have experienced in life will have been wasted or is unimportant. He has walked you through difficult times, trials, dope through grievous pain and weary struggles. You know, as the apple of God's eye, he is not going to discard you. He's not going to throw you away. You know, when we go in the market sometimes and we buy an apple and the apple rotten, you leave it in the fridge, we have discard it, you put it away. Mm -mm. Even though we rotten, God not throwing us away. God holding on to this. And hear what he said, I could fix this, you know. I have the power to renew it. He is strengthening us, increasing our abilities and building into us his character so that we can communicate to a lost and lonely world how much God loves us. Thank you. Remember, as rotten as we may be, we are still the apple of God's eye. He's not going to throw us away. He's not going to discard us, but he's going to renew us, revive us, and recharge us. Thank you, and do have a blessed and a wonderful day as we continue in prayer, in supplication, in the true room of God. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Adelina. As a youth, I'm truly touched on.